Oh get. my god, look at this man handling a hot rag. Hi, I'm Phil. And I'm Will. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. Tonight on the show, we're making a cake for John's birthday. And by we, I mean Will. Happy birthday, John. This one's for you. I don't like baking, so today, Will's gonna save the day and make a cake that tastes good. I'm sure of it. So, per John's request, this is an Earl Grey tea bundt cake. Let's start making this cake. First thing that every recipe will always tell you to do is to preheat the oven. It's gonna be 350 degrees. 350, boom. The second step in this recipe is for the key Earl Grey ingredient. You steep Earl Grey tea in some steamed milk. And it calls for one cup. I brought this milk from home. I'm gonna be careful and start off at like, I don't know, 33 seconds. Milk has a tendency to boil over pretty fast. So I feel like as long as we just get it kind of steamy hot, that'll be sufficient. All right, so that's 33, 33, 22, 22. Or 66 and 44. Whoa, man. All right. That looks nice and steamy. Yeah, that's that's good. It's warm to the touch, a little hot. That should be good enough. You can even smell it a little bit. It's got that warm milk smell. And then we're going to take our two packets of Earl Grey. Make sure that it's submerged. It smells way better with the tea. It does. So yeah, <laughs> so I let that steep for 10 minutes. All right, next what we're gonna do is go ahead and cream the butter and sugar. So we're going to cream our butter and sugar, unsalted. So a half cup is one stick. Half cup of butter, one cup of sugar. Try and level this out a little bit. I, I would say that's, eh, eh. <laughs> There's one half cup. Boom. All right, so make sure your butter is room temperature because you need to be able to actually mix it. Um, if it's not, a technique that I found that is helpful is to put it in the microwave for five second increments while you turn it so that different sides get heated evenly. Ooh, that's a good tip. All right. Uh, so yeah, the big thing is you're just trying to make sure that the butter is nice and fluffy. You're essentially just trying to coat the sugar in the butter and then whipping it to try and get all that air in there which is then captured in the cake and they get nice and fluffy and delicious. So next step is we add in the eggs one at a time and there's two eggs. There's two eggs in this recipe. You can be fancy and crack them into a separate bowl but I didn't. It's important whenever you're baking that you only add eggs one at a time because typically you're trying to, as they say in the chemistry profession, make an emulsion. And so if you put in too much liquid at once, it's gonna weigh it down and it's gonna be a kind of dense cake. Okay, you just wanna make sure it's just incorporated. You don't wanna over mix it. Doop. Second egg. All right, and now with your second egg in there, go ahead. Mix it up. So again, you don't want to overmix it because uh, I think they say that it like overworks the batter or something. And then after you put in your eggs, half teaspoon of vanilla. And we will go ahead and mix that up. Now the dry ingredients. Now the dry ingredients. Well, what makes a dry ingredient dry? Uh, an absence of liquid. Typically. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Supper bowl, combined flour, and baking powder. So that's going to be two cups of flour, four teaspoons of baking powder. Before I do that though, I'm going to go ahead and grease my pan. What you can do is just use a stick of butter and grease the inside so that it gets all those nooks and crannies. So we do this. All right, so after you've greased it up with butter or whatever fat of your choice, go ahead and- Ooh, what are some alternatives? Uh, margarine. Lard. I guess you could use lard. I don't know if that would affect the flavor of the cake at all. A lot of lard has almost no flavor, actually. Okay. Like olive oil? I wouldn't use olive oil. <laughs> I wouldn't use olive oil. All right, so uh, just dust it with a little bit of flour. And then what I like to do is kind of just tap it around and you want to coat the inside so that you get a little bit of flour along all those crevices. 
I'm in awe. All right. You don't have to do sifting. I like to sift. It's fun. It also makes sure you don't get any clumps of flour in there. You don't have to sift. I like to sift. But we need, I, I believe I already said two cups. I'm gonna triple check. Two cups of flour. And then it said four teaspoons of baking powder. Four teaspoons. Now remember, this is baking powder, not baking soda. There is a difference. And then sift. All right, it's sifted. What you do need to do is mix it up because you need to make sure that that baking powder is evenly distributed through your mix. All right, we're going to slowly add in the dry mix and then our steeped milk. And this is cooled down enough that it should not have any issues with like melting our butter. You do not want to melt your butter. So we'll just add in a little bit here. I'm doing like a half cup just to uh, get that initial mix in. All right. And again, you're doing your best not to over mix. You want to try and make sure that this is mixed all the way, but not over beaten. Okay. Add in a little bit of our milk. It's got a nice tan coloring to it. How's it look, Phil? Ooh, that smells good. Yeah, that, that Earl Grey smell is really coming through. All right, so I'll add in some more of our dry. I just would not have the patience for this at all. <laughs> I feel like I'm impatient watching you two. <laughs> and some more of our milk. And I'm gonna take a second here to scrape these sides. So I think at this point we can add in the remainder of our dry. Boom. And add in the remainder of our wet. Because again, it's an emulsion. You can't put too much of one thing in at once or else you'll throw it out of whack. This is looking really good. We're almost there. Again, just gonna do another scrape of the sides to make sure we got everything. Okay. And then yeah, you're looking for like a really nice sort of smooth consistency. And then we're going to go ahead and spoon it into our tin. Phil, I guess if you wanna get in there and rotate it for me, that would be helpful. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, or the, the... Oh, the pan. Yeah, thank you. The instructions were not clear. I apologize. I forgive you. I'm going to do your best to scrape out the remainder of your batter. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then, yeah, take your your spatula. Just kind of like smooth it down, fill those nooks and crannies. You also want to try and... What's that called? Um, I don't know if there's a term for it, but basically you just kind of smack in the tin to uh, try and get like all those random little air bubbles and stuff. All right, so everything's in here. Oven's preheated to 350. Recipe says bake at 45 degrees. At 45 degrees? Or 45 minutes. <laughs> I'm assuming it's gonna be fine. This seemed like a pretty normal cake consistency to me. Uh, in the meantime, I suppose what we can do is make a frosting for it. A very simple vanilla frosting. What is the difference between icing and frosting? I'm not being facetious. I really don't know. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know off the top of my head. Listen, I didn't look it up yet. If you know the difference between frosting and icing and glaze, please let us know in the comments below. All right, so we are also going to be making an icing. Phil got me second guessing myself now. <laughs> We're gonna be making a topping for the cake that's made out of confectioner sugar, milk, and vanilla. So, we need a cup of confectioner sugar, powdered sugar, icing sugar. It goes by so many different names, but we need a cup of it. You don't have to be exact with this. This is basically all down to taste and consistency, but you should sift it because you're going to need to whisk it. I should have used a bigger bowl. <laughs> well, you better clean up after this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Most of it should go through. You'll probably end up with a few little big guys there. 
but uh, you can like crush them. Just crush them, pop, 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 pop. Don't push it through though. That defeats the whole purpose of sifting it. That's what they always say. I don't know what the reasons are. I'm passing on words of wisdom. All right, that's, that's fine. So yeah, we got our cup of sugar. We are now going to add in a little bit of milk. So it says like one or two tablespoons of milk. So I'm just gonna use a little bit. With this, you don't have to be exact. And that seems like a pretty good consistency because again, we're just gonna like drizzle it over top of the cake. And then we need our half teaspoon of vanilla to give it a little bit of actual flavor because right now it is just sugar. Tastes like powdered sugar. I assume we'll go pretty well with the cake. Yep, there's that. We'll put that on top of the cake here when it comes out of the oven. But for right now, we're still waiting about 30 minutes. So tune in then. Please clap. All right, are we recording? Alarm just went off. Cake's coming out of the oven. Looks like a cake. I would say, yeah, it does. That looks really good. All right, that is clean. Shoo, that's clean. All right, and then this needs to rest for a while. We're probably gonna do like, I don't know, 30 minutes or something, just to make sure that when we actually apply the icing, it doesn't just instantly melt off. All right. All right, our cake has been resting for about 20 minutes, so don't try and flip the pan onto the cake stand. Do that instead. And I heard it pop out immediately. Boom. Boom. There's the cake. That's very nice, Will. The texture looks smooth. So since it's a nice thing, you typically just want to drizzle it. Not too much. It's really sweet. So you can see it still could have probably used a little bit of cooling as it's like melting a little bit, but whatever. I think. I think that's an okay amount. So let's go ahead and cut open again. As you can see, a lot of the glaze has sort of melted off. If you don't want that to happen, let it rest a little longer. Wow, look at that. Look at that crumb. It seems, it seems good. It seems good. As I stab it, take a bite. Nice and crumbly. Mm. That Earl Grey flavor definitely comes through. It's a little dry, which I mean, I feel like it's gonna happen with a lot of cakes. I'm not sure how to improve upon that, but I think overall pretty good cake. Not bad for a first go at it. Maybe got a little overcooked, but eh, we're not we're not too picky here. Oh, it's so fluffy. That's great. Will's overly critical. This is <laughs> this is very good. It's kind of like um, it is subtle, but uh, it's also familiar. Like it it feels like that flavor belongs in it. I really like that. That's a really tasty cake. Nice job, Will. That's how you do it. Bye-bye. <laughs>